It was pitch black. Waves are crashing. You're walking and out of nowhere comes this creature. There's a very, very small window every year when these amazing turtles migrate back down from Canada and they nest on the beaches. Seeing the leatherbacks in Trinidad was mind-blowing. Uh, by far the most magnificent creature I've ever seen. I'm Trevor Kunk, and I'm a chef in New York City. I grew up in Sarasota, Florida. My connection to the ocean goes back longer than I can remember. It's in my heart and my soul. Working in the top of restaurants, it's not only how the food looks, how the food tastes, but it's very important for me to be able to tell my guests where the food is coming from. For me, there needs to be a story behind it. I had the opportunity to go down to Trinidad with the Oceanic Society and cook some local dishes. When I travel, I really like to learn what's being cooked in the communities and the cities, and I really like to go to the smaller operations and the family-run establishments and really see what the heart and the soul and the culture is of that community. Cuisine in Trinidad is very much connected to the ocean, and it's full utilization of the fish. But for me, what's really important is knowing where that food's coming from. It needs to be the most sustainable place as possible especially in regards to bycatch. We had the opportunity to meet with the local fisherman here. We discussed what he's catching and bycatch. I was 14 years when I started. Wow. Yeah, I used to go to school and fish at the same time. <laughs> here we hold Kari, Kingfish, Oshanga, which is in Malin. No one wants to catch a leatherback. It's too much trouble. But what happens is that most of the time, the area that they are is a feeding area. So you just have other fish there. Mainly how they get itself entangled is every time they hit the net, they try to turn. The net would hook on that beak there. And right over the tail on the shell, there's a peak there that hooks in it. And those two parts are what create all the problem for them. There were times I hold as much as 27 in one set. I hold 38 in one night. I try my best to save them. But if they swallow enough water in the sink, they die easy. As a chef and as a consumer, I'm aware of bycatch. I've seen it, it's on video, online, and I've seen it in person. But finding out these creatures that have been around for over 100 million years are being trapped in these nets and essentially they're being suffocated and they're drowning was very surprising and very shocking. All the choices that we make, whether we're at the grocery store or at the farmer's market, have an impact. It's not only on our local community, but the world. There needs to be a culture change. And with that culture change, it needs to not only start with the fishermen, but it needs to be followed by the person that's purchasing from them, and then the consumer. The general public asking questions is very, very helpful. It applies pressure. The consumer really, really speaks the loudest voice. We have the choice, the oceans. They can be thriving, full of fish, full of sea creatures. And we have the ability to stop bycatch and make great seafood choices.